guys, this is Kelly. I finally got some creative time. So this is page number 17 in my mixed media mini art journal series. Slow down, you're missing the good stuff. And I'll get into why I use that. So there's the finished product product project. <laughs> I really like it. Very colorful. Makes me happy. And it was super easy. So um first I didn't have any way. I already cut that watercolor paper to a size that included a border. So I needed to stick it down somehow. I didn't want to tape it down to something because it would have created another border. So I just used some double sided tape and put it on the back. I knew it would buckle a little bit but this was just a quick background. So what I'm doing is I'm using a napkin and um, I love that napkin and uh, for the life of me I can't remember who gave it to me. I'm so lucky. I might have bought that one myself but I think that was gifted to me. So I'm showing you to separate your napkins and definitely you should separate them. Um, there's three layers to it and I was just showing you hold on to that layer because it's a real subtle background you could use it again in another project. So I think it's just lavender and I just thought that was so pretty and a super quick background um, to use so I decided I was going to cut that napkin out and then I uh, my sweet friend Carrie gave me a uh, Derwent uh, watercolor pencils, a set of 24, and I was going to play with them, but then I started thinking, wait a minute, for what I have planned for this page, oh, uh, I can't use them. It says water soluble right there, and of course they're water soluble. They're watercolor crayons, but um, I knew what I was going to be doing with this. I had an idea, and I knew that whatever background I put down was really going to be compromised as soon as I put a medium on top. So. I went with my watercolor um, set and uh, because once that dries it stays put much better and I am literally just slapping down color because I know I'm going to put that napkin over it so I'm just choosing some colors and just spreading them around and uh, trying to keep them kind of separate so that I don't make mud and just going with some colors I think will complement what's on the napkin and again just slapping down the color so first I wet the paper and then I just added color here and there I did some red oh gosh there's mixtures I already had mixtures in my palette so it's hard to tell but um alizarin crimson there was some orange in there there's blue there's green there's purple there's yellow and I kind of mixed my own colors and, and then some of them I just took it straight from the color and uh, the red um, was the one I was taking straight from it was the least compromised color that I had on my palette so and there's no right or wrong way to do it you just slap down color if you make mud and you don't like the color grab a paper towel and sop it up and do it again it's this is so easy guys it's so easy if you're sitting here going oh I'm scared I don't want to do it I know exactly how you feel but just do it you can't do it wrong I tell you guys that all the time so I decided that I wanted to have um, a big old blob of yellow in the middle right there because I love the yellow and the purple together so I thought I'd put that down there and then I didn't like how it was running so I sopped it up a little bit with a paper towel and um, just added a little bit more and dried it and then I think if it dried it added a little bit more I can't recall but so I just used my matte medium um, once I dried it I just put a light coat on with a real cheap brush and then carefully lay down my napkin um, it's just like tissue paper it does add like a little whitewash look to it very similar to tissue paper the napkin is um, just as fragile as the tissue paper so you have to be kind of gentle with your brush strokes when you're adding your medium on top if you're using a heavy body medium um, you're probably ruining it so I would use the, a more liquid kind of medium when you're adding napkins and tissue paper on so then I'm using my um, designs by Rin stamp I love that one I think it's Salini I will have the link to um, her store and where you can buy that stamp it is one of my favorites I've used it um, several times so I love to color it I love to stamp it and color it and kind of bring it to life it's just beautiful and I love the details of it so I sped this up um, while I was coloring it and I stuck to the watercolor idea 
because a lot of people are like, how are you going to watercolor that and keep it vibrant? And you just use a little less water. So I got a nice fine brush, a uh, fine tip brush, and used less water and more of the pigment. Now, now my watercolor um, set is a Winsor & Newton. So they're little tubes of pigment, as you can see in the picture there. And I really like it. I re I'm so glad that I got that one. But, um, yeah, it's really easy to mix and make your own colors. And, ugh, love it. So I wanted the colors to just pop right off of that thing and be really vibrant. And uh, I knew it would kind of have a matte finish, so I at the end I, I did put stickles on it. You probably saw that. So just to make it sparkle. So, but the reason why, um, you know, it's been a long time. It's been over a month since I've been able to do a video, and I'm not going to bore you guys with, with why that is, but um, the inspiration for this page was um, my kids. They're on summer break, and I'm working just like everyone else, and I'm fortunate where I work mainly from home, and I can spend time with them, and I just... I was missing the good stuff that was happening right there and and I only have a few short years left there I have a 24 year old and and that went by super super fast so I learned from that and now I've, they're 12 and 10 and I I just got a few short years left where they actually want me around so that's been my focus and I'm sure you all understand that but um yeah I had to slow down because you're missing the good stuff if you don't stay focused and and just reflect every now and then so um, yeah and that inspiration I think wound up creating a really really pretty page and I love it so I am in some color I am in love with yellow lately so it's so funny looking at that upside down it kinda looks like a face like a massive nose and a mustache <laughs> ah, that was funny so um, my camera kind of died, so I missed a lot, but I'm going to walk you through it. So I just used my label maker really fast. This page was super fast for me, and I love those. And I did the label uh, and then just backed it on some black cardstock. Then I have these cute little sequins, and I don't usually use them because they fly around everywhere. And I decided that they were just the right kind of spark that my page kind of needed. So it's orange, green, and white, and then some black and um, yeah so I used my glossy accents to glue those down on the um, stamp I used the Stardust Stickles that is my favorite absolute favorite the most versatile stickler, stickles out there I think so I put it all on the moth and I used my white jelly roll pen and just made some reflection marks I distressed the sides all the edges of my watercolor paper and um, inked it with black soot and then I stamped of course you guys have seen me do that I stamped the stamp on my page and then I glued it on top of it so here I'm just gonna do a quick flip through i was showing you how thick my book is it's really not bad at all and um, I'm just rolling through the pages that I've done so far and there's where I use the same stamp I think that was page three and there I colored the paper and then I stamped on it. There were some leaves with alcohol ink, another napkin that I used there, some water coloring. That was some paint. I was feeling very adventurous that day. <laughs> some vintage pages. Whoops. I love that little coffee one. It makes me happy. And I, you know what? I love all the pages in here, except for page two. I don't like that one. Some vintage feels to those. It's kind of hard to see that one, but still looks good when you look up close. Lots of Rin stamps in this book because I'm just I'm just in love with them, and she's just I'm on her design team, so I have a lot of them, and I love them. Some flowers, and there's the gratitude one. Love that one. I used some acrylic paint. It was I show you ultra blue deep is the color. I didn't want to use a black background. I always go to that and um, really was feeling the blue color with this. So I just slapped the paint on there and dried it. Now I have to be real careful here when I'm doing this because my stickles are still wet and my um, glossy accents is still tacky. So I am going to glue that down. 
so easy. Ah, I loved using napkins for my background because they have just gorgeous patterns on them. And you could recreate that lavender in the background. You can recreate that really easy with watercolor. Um, but I, I don't think I'm quite, it would take a lot of time. And as I said, I'm slowing down because I'm missing the good stuff. So, um, I didn't recreate it, but I might do that here in the future. We'll see. So I'm using, I'm sorry, I'm off screen here, guys. Um, I zoomed in so you guys could see the pages a little bit better. But I didn't want to cut it all out so I could talk to you. So I'm using my Aileen's Turbo Tacky Glue. Love that glue. Um, be ready for it, though, because it dries quick. And that can be a good and bad thing. And I needed it to dry quick so that my thick watercolor paper would stick. So there we go. And don't be afraid to do your pages outside of a book that you're working on and glue it in. Why not? Right? It's your book. Do it how you want. Especially with watercoloring. Because unless you have a book of all watercolor paper, and I don't. This is a recycled McDonald's Happy Meal book. For those that don't know. So, but that glue works great. So there it is. Gluing that down. And I like that blue background. I think it really helps kind of bring your focus in. I don't always have to go to black. I usually do. But I love the sparkliness of this page. I was zooming out a little bit for you. And little white accents here and there. Real subtle. It's a real subtle page with still some real pretty colors. The lighting doesn't really um, do the colors justice. That blue is really popping out of there, which is really pretty blue. I like it. But um, the background colors still shine through really, really nicely. Um, even though they're muted, which is exactly what you want, but it still looks nice. So I hope you guys like it as much as I do, page 17. Hope you're inspired to make something beautiful. There's no right or wrong to do it. You just have to do it. It's only wrong if you don't do it. So there's another view of it. Hope you guys like it. Thank you so much for your patience and watching the series. And check out the links below. And if you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks, guys.